Welcome to Becoming the Ultimate Coach. I'm the Jock, and this is the Doc. And with our combined experience in psychology and fitness, we are here to help you become the ultimate fitness coach. Today, we're talking about maximizing revenue, our top three takeaways from our full day workshop. Yeah, so this is our second episode regarding a recent one day workshop that we had the privilege of doing for Perform Better um, in Rhode Island. And the first episode, in case you didn't catch it, is on client compliance and our 360 wellness approach, behavior science with that. So I'll suggest you check that out. And today we're going to talk about this notion of increasing your revenue from clients based on this 360 wellness approach. So what's always interesting about this, and, and you know, our, our stick is, and if you've seen any of our stuff, it's the behavior science because it's Dr. J's specialty. And I've seen it as a fitness professional is we need the behavior science you know, if we're, if we're working with people and as personal trainers and coaches, we're working with people. So we have to have that down. But at the same time, we feel that we should be making good money while we're doing this, not only as personal trainers on the floor, but providing this, this 360 wellness approach that we're coaching other coaches. And so today we're going to dive into the, the, the three ways that you can increase your revenue by using behavior science. And the first one is by attracting clients that train at other gyms. The second one is by getting clients started with you that aren't quite ready to start working out. And the third one is by generating more revenue from your current clients that you have working with you. So kicking off the first one, and I, I really like this one, which I really like all three of them, that's why they're there. But <laughs> since we're starting with the first one, um, you start to get these people that train at other facilities. So uh, a few examples that we see from, from coaches that do this service, they get people that, that train at other gyms. So maybe they don't do CrossFit, but they do CrossFit somewhere else. Or maybe it's someone that likes working at a big gym and doing their own workout. Or maybe it's someone that just likes to run and just do their own thing. They can still provide this, this 360 wellness coaching that helps people with their overall wellness plan. So people might have a, a physical side they like. They like doing yoga, they like running, they like working out on their own, but they need someone to help them with their nutrition, their sleep, really to get them to do the other things that they don't like doing. It's like the people that like to run, we need to push to do some yoga or some strength training. So really helping with that wellness approach. And this is a great way to market and get and, and help these people that wouldn't naturally come and, and just maybe because they don't like the, the type of training that you're doing at your facility. Yeah, and you know I talk about this a lot and, and you and I have definitely spent some time on this information implementation gap. Yeah. and. People are Googling, they're searching, they're, they're seeking out so much information about everything from, like you said, sleep to what should I eat to stress management. You know, people are increasingly aware that there's so many more facets to their life that they need to address. And there's so much information out there. Of course, some of it's garbage, but how do you know it's garbage if this isn't your field? Yep. And, um, and, and they're really just looking for a guide, somebody that can really help filter that out and go through that exercise and that nutrition science lens, and then use behavior science to really help them figure out what strategies work best for their goals as well as their lifestyle. So to Scott's point, they can do some of the physical fitness activities elsewhere, yep. but they need that guide. And if you can become that guide and really help shape that, now it might translate to other activities in your gym at some point, but regardless, it allows them to have that individuality. And what I also like about it a lot is that there are, as we know, there are personality types that love to mix things up. So those are the people that you see, you know, hop from one gym to another to another or try the newest thing that came into town. They still get to do all of that, but still can come to you for that overall guide and that overall direction and still get that. I like to mix it up stuff um, across with other facilities. Yeah, absolutely. So number two, uh, getting the people started that they want to start doing change, but they're, they don't feel like they're in good enough shape yet. And, and this is something like, I see so many fitness professionals, myself including in the past, used to kind of always joke around about, because they're like, well, that's the point of our, our fitness facilities to help you get yeah. into shape, but people want, or they want to get in better shape before they start. This is the perfect way to do it. So instead of having people come in and start working out, like, hey, well, let's just come and meet and let's just talk about the things that you're doing. It might be, we're increasing your steps outside the gym. It might be increasing your water. It might be getting a little bit of your food and your sleep. So it's getting a bit of this behavioral momentum as Dr. J likes to call it and getting people like just feeling better about themselves, getting them more confident and getting them comfortable with coming into your facility. Because these first two things that I talked about, you know, the, the people training people that train at other facilities and also training people that don't feel like they're quite ready, it's it's a good gateway drug for them to get into your other programs too. Because a lot of people that, that come, they might start with just this wellness coaching um, 
with you and you can kind of help them get healthier, get more fit without even doing some training. But after a while, you're like, hey, now's a good time for you to actually start doing some of my strength training programs. So it's, a, it's just a great transition and it's a great way, great way to get people started. Yeah, and, and this is so important because so many of these individuals, there's a couple of psychological things that, that may or may not be happening and I don't ever wanna overgeneralize, but I wanna just highlight a couple of things. There are a group of people that have never had success or been part of a lot of fitness, sports, activities. It just wasn't their gig or there wasn't opportunities as they were growing up, wasn't a family thing, whatever it is. And so as adults, it is very insecure to try something you have never had any experience with and thinking about walking into a place where everyone else has in their minds has been successful or knows how to do this. And so sometimes entering a facility for training can be so intimidating. And again, so having this, everybody can relate to a private conversation that they get to have about their life. It, it, they can establish trust. They can share some things with you about what their goals are. And then, you know, we talk a lot about minimal effective dose and things like that. And you start them small and they start to see that like, okay, this doesn't take um, professional uh, sports experience or anything else to be successful in this realm. The other thing that happens, and we even see this with people that have significant weight loss. And I just want you to kind of parallel in your mind this psychological concept. But we have people sometimes that um, have a lot of weight that they've lost and they are leaner, they are slimmer, but they still don't see themselves as that. They still see themselves as heavy people. The same thing can happen with people that aren't currently training. They can't see themselves as somebody that's pursuing fitness or health. They may want it, but they don't visualize themselves as that person that's pursuing that. And so having them just come to the gym and saying like, don't worry about it, we'll get you in shape and it's all good. They're not seeing themselves as that person. And so they're having a disconnect. So by having this gateway drug, so to speak, um, of a way to, to have, bring them in on a different level, just talking about a few things that they might wanna change, and it could be sleep, it could be just mobility, it could be food, things like that, some weight management, it allows them to start seeing that they actually have the agency to make that change. And again, there's that behavior momentum. Then once they start seeing themselves as that person that can change some things in their lives, you will see that snowball into a whole lot more change, which is super exciting. So again, I just wanted to highlight those because we do hear a lot of people going, I don't get it. How can you think you have to be in shape to come to the gym? So I just wanted to take a little bit of a, a lens shift on why that might be happening and why this is such a great population for us to pursue, um, to really support in this 360 wellness. Yeah, it's basically being more inclusive to a larger audience. Yep. Uh, we talk a lot about this as, as a lot of the marketing for the fitness is, is, is marketing to people that are already in shape. Because if we're showing people that are in shape at a facility, uh, yep. we show, we're showing people doing hard workouts. We're showing ourselves doing hard workouts with shirts maybe on or off. Um, it can be very intimidating for people. But if, if we can show people that like we're working with people that, that might not be in the best shape or that are beginning on the journey or don't have a history of sports, like there's a lot of different things that we can do there to attract new people. And, and that's that's what so many of us got into the space anyways, is, is to help people. And this is just expanding that reach. So moving on to number three, uh, making more from your current clients. And so, um, there's several ways you can make more from your current clients. Uh, one is just by increasing the prices for them and giving them the same service. And that's probably their least favorite of, of the ways yeah. to do that. And, yeah. and there's, a, there's a right time and place for that. But what we're talking about is adding an extra service on that gives them more value that they're happy to pay for. So we have the physical side, and I think that's important. And most gyms are in that spot. Like most of the people at this workshop were doing the physical side. They were yeah. they were personal trainers or they were um, group instructors or there was some por portion of that, that that side that they were doing. But very few were doing this more of this, this 360 wellness that we talk a lot about. That's having these conversations, and you can see it on our previous one of like, private conversations off the floor, getting to the root cause of unhealthy behavior, being their overall fitness guide and helping them with their whole fitness journey instead of just making them slightly more physically strong or fit or whatever we want to call it, which again is important, but it's, it's taking that, that, that whole approach and making sure that all aspects are improving that line up with their goal. And so it's a way that you can add on a different, an additional service and charge your client, your current clients more for that. So your, your current clients are happier 
because they're they're getting a service that they couldn't get anywhere else. Um, and you, as the gym owner or the, the trainer for them, is, is making more revenue or income based off that because they're getting that extra thing. Yeah, and, and a couple of things that I really want to highlight, and I'll start with this latter one because you just mentioned it about making more money. Again, people want to feel successful and have a good career and things like that. So money is part of that. But in the fitness industry, we really need coaches, trainers to stay in the industry, yeah. to bring that expertise and that experience and that know-how and to really strengthen it. And so people need to make, you need to make the money to stay in that career and have it viable. So it's not just important for you to like, oh, I'll, I'll make some more money. It's actually really important for the, the general population and the clients that we have coaches that are feeling very fulfilled and successful, can can live their lifestyle and stay in this career because we know that the turnover is significant. The other thing is, and I hear this sometimes from coaches, is that they worry that um, if they don't have a lot of 30-day challenges or mix things up all the time, the clients will get bored and just leave. And when you're providing value, that won't happen, number one. But number two, this is an additional service that you can offer that mixes that up a little bit for them and they can see because we all have different seasons in our lives. You have people that just had a baby and they're trying to reestablish everything with a routine with small children. You have people that are at different points of um, maturation, aging, things like that, and they're rethinking um, what their lifestyle is, their sleep, their overall health. We all have these different seasons. And so if we're providing a 360 wellness for them, we'll be able to continue to provide that through all of these different seasons in addition to any of that exercise science that we're applying with at the training. So again, it just allows people to go like, this is my community, this is my third place, this is the place I want to be because it's giving me an overall guide and support in so many areas that make the rest of my life more amazing, more fulfilling, and also gives them the time and energy to do the things that they really enjoy. Good points, Dr. J. Thanks. So you might be thinking, um, I, I don't know how to do this. Um, I've learned how to do personal training. I'm used to working out with people. How do I do this? And so this is um, this is my plug. Um, we have an online course. Like we, we've been teaching this for a few years now. We're getting great feedback on that. Um, as you can see here, that we do a full day workshops. So if you're a facility that uh, is looking for us to come in to to work with your team, we're happy to do that, because. This is something that the clients are asking for. Like if you look at the, the recent uh, research that like MindBody did, and we, we talked about this, people are looking for more of the wellness. It's not just the weight loss. And so this is a service that we can teach you how to do, and you can make more money doing it, and you can just have better results with your clients. So uh, thank you for listening to this episode on maximizing revenue in your personal training business. And we hope that you found these three takeaways from our full day workshop regarding increasing revenue um, really helpful and insightful. And, and remember, this is about offering a service not only to your existing clients and getting kind of more from your existing clients, but also an opportunity to offer a service that will attract new and different types of clients. And like we talked about, expand also that inclusivity, which I think most people are really interested in for their facilities. Yeah, so don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel for more tips and strategies on how to succeed in the fitness industry.